friends, welcome. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal here with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show, the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets. And we've had quite the week, lots to cover. Let's go ahead and get started with what we are going to be looking at today. Day, as usual, we are going to take a look at the broader markets and see where the markets end it. Very strong week for the broader market indices. And then, of course, deep dive beyond that. Top headline news, I'll share with you some of the more impactful events that did take place last week. And then also, again, that deep dive into the markets, downtrend reversals and base breakouts. And uh, hard to believe that I can say that, but uh, certainly pleased that the markets are exhibiting signs of at the very least firming up and then potentially reversing. So as usual, all of this is designed to help you not only prepare for next week, we want to get a look beyond that broader moving out, uh, certainly into the first half of this year. So tough journey, but uh, we're going to see what's on the horizon into the close today. So the news last week, the Federal Reserve, the FOMC with Fed Chair Powell, they did raise interest rates a quarter of a percent, very much as anticipated. However, within the Fed comments with Fed Chair Powell's, uh, he did give a speech afterward. And in that, he highlighted the fact that the U.S. economy is remaining on the path of growth despite high inflation and certainly geopolitical tensions. And that was really one of the little sparks at the beginning of the week that helped the markets find their footing. We did get inflation numbers also. Core inflation in that number did drop. And this is The core inflation number is what the Fed is keying in on. They view that as more indicative of inflation, while the broader uh, inflationary number was high. Food, retail, gas, those prices are all remaining elevated. But uh, another little hint of good news there was the core inflation dropping. We did see retail sales come out. It did increase in February, but however, at a slower pace, those inflationary fears are certainly at the forefront of consumer spending there. Uh, We did see a sharp rise in bond yields. Certainly the Fed rate hike was one reason. The other reason is the flight into the stock market out of the safe haven of treasury bonds. So sharp rise there, we'll look at the impact. And next week we have Of course, as always, more data, durable goods orders will be coming out. There's anticipation that it will be quite a bit lower than it was this time last year. So we'll see how the markets take that. Consumer sentiment numbers will be released. And then Fed Chair Powell will be giving a talk earlier in the week. And as always, they'll be closely monitored to see if there's any other further hints as it relates to interest rates. The markets did post what's called a follow-through day, and that's very positive for the markets. I'll share with you what that looks like. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at a chart. Here we are with the S&P 500. This is a daily price chart, and we can see that it has been certainly a very, very volatile period. A lot of damage done since this peak in the beginning of this year. However, take a look at the advance this week and the S&P 500 up 6% and no small feat for an index that was very much in a declining phase, but good news. And we are getting some nice volume characteristics there as well. So to the point, the S&P 500 closed the week up above this 50-day simple moving average. And that's a real line in the sand. Certainly for institutional money, it is a number that is closely uh, watched as it relates to the index and that 50-day. Next up is a potential break up above this blue 200-day simple moving average, which of course would be ideal. So from here, I'm going to share other indexes, but I want you to know that we are going to look at really what worked last week, what is in the works, and as always, just really helping get you uh, around what is taking place because this is a 
big move. The NASDAQ up 8%. So really, I think as an uh, investor, you may find yourself just trying to uncover really where should you focus? Because in addition to this 6% rise in the S&P, a lot of underlying stocks up quite a bit more. So again, we'll get into that as we move on, uh, help prepare you again uh, going forward with the now brightening horizon in the broader market. So let's go ahead. Oh, one last thing, the RSI, relative strength indicator, and the stochastics now both in positive territory up here above this 50. So net net, uh, as mentioned earlier in this week on Wednesday, those of you that are subscribers to my MEM Edge report, I did highlight the fact that we had what is called a follow through day. And this is something that you can very easily look up. It's part of my training with Bill William O'Neill. And one of the characteristics that does identify a downtrend reversal. So those characteristics did exhibit themselves and the markets are now in a nice uh, near-term confirmed uptrend. Here we are with the NASDAQ. I talked about this index up even higher, 8.1%. I'm gonna refresh this because as the markets continued to rally into the close, let's take a look. This is the red 50-day simple moving average at 13872, and we did close at 13893. So just inching above this 50-day simple moving average. Good news, nice high volume characteristics. The highest volume day was on this Wednesday follow-through day. You need to see higher volume over the prior day. We did experience that as well as other characteristics. The RSI up here in positive territory, and I can just take a second here and pull, pull up these stochastics. I like to use the faster moving stochastics when looking at broader market indexes, looking at different uh, various sectors. So here we are, we can see that the stochastics are confirming also in positive territory. So. Uh, good news here on the markets in the near term. So let's go ahead and take a look at those S&P sectors that are underlying that S&P. And we have them listed here in a two-month daily price chart. And I've gone ahead and added this RSI indicator. I'm going to go ahead and update that. We want to focus on where the relative outperformances, and that's going to be up here in this upper left quartile as you move down to this right side, these are your weaker areas, uh, but we did see a lot in the way of strength. Now, this isn't gonna be pure, for instance, consumer discretionary, that's XLY. That particular index was uh, ETF, was up the most, up 9%. So it is simply stating that relative to these other sectors, Currently, healthcare is up here in the forefront, and here is why. Healthcare, as uh, again, my MEM Edge biweekly report, we did highlight this last week, the fact that it was coming in to favor, and this is prior to the broader markets and to the other sectors that are now seemingly in the throes of reversing their downtrends. So a lot of good news here with healthcare. I'll go ahead in our next segment here, share with you a a couple of the areas in healthcare that are really helping to advance. But if you look at XLV and the underlying components, a lot of it is these larger pharma stocks that are offering high yields and bright prospects. So let's go back, take a look at some of these other ETFs as we move forward, because up here in the forefront, these uh, upper ETFs here all have turned bullish. Let's just take a quick look at the close here on XLY. And we did break back above that 50 day. So good news, but a pretty sharp V-shaped recovery. From here, again, the underlying components are really going to tell the tale because Tesla was up almost 14%. That's a heavyweight in this group. Amazon up 11%. Uh, we're going to get into that as well. But a lot of certainly movement and vibrancy taking place, certainly relative to the current six to eight weeks in the broader markets. So up here at the forefront as well, XLI turning bullish up above these moving averages, all about uh, transports were up big, 
and uh, transportation services. So that is good news. These transports generally fare well during an economic expansion uh, period. So again, I uh, did want to share with you very quickly some of the relatively weaker areas. Now, XLK was the second highest performer for the week, up 7.6%. However, you can see if you were to take a look at the each of these ETFs that it was down the most. We had the tech heavy NASDAQ in a bear market. So a lot more in the way of work to do as it relates to relatively turning positive. But we did get this nice area of support here that we are building off of and potentially into positive territory. Next up, we will go ahead now and get into some of these underlying groups within the S&P 500. I'm going to be sharing with you some areas, high growth areas in medical and also technology. So these ETFs are ones that for me, I very closely follow as a way to get in front of these groups as they're moving into favor. So again, that RSI in descending order. And then first up is the yield on that 10 year. I talked about this spike that we saw certainly this week the yield did close at 2.15, and it was up, I believe, about 7.5%. Uh, but we are up here in this territory on the Fed's signaling of raising rates and then that rotation out of the bonds into stocks. So down here in this weaker area, now this is good news that it is in the weakest standing this is your volatility or fear index, VIX. So what is taking shape here is the fact that the Federal Reserve has gotten more seemingly structured as it relates to their interest rate height program. That is calming on the markets. Certainly the in, uh, geopolitical issues in Ukraine with Russia's invasion is still unfortunately taking place. But as it relates to the U.S. markets, uh, the, the shock, that initial shock is starting to wane. So all of that is helping this volatility, also known as the fear index, pull back. So we did close the week here at about 24. And from my work, ideally, if we could settle down back into this lower around this 18 level, that historically would help the broader markets continue with their rally. So back up here in the areas that are certainly relatively outperforming, we didn't really get to the Dow. The Dow was up about five and a half percent, but another sharp rally taking place among the underlying areas in the uh, Dow. And we'll get into some of those as we move on here. But talked about healthcare moving up and turning bullish. This is IHI, and it is the U.S. Medical Devices ETF, a high growth area. You can, uh, within this area, you will see a number of the top performers in the S&P emanating from here, DXCM, uh, some of these other ISRG all up there that have growth numbers, but were really, uh, as I would like to say, the baby was thrown out with the bathwater in these names, but they did spike back up. Certainly this week, this IHI Health uh, Medical Products Index up 8.3%. That's listed here. And then we did see small cap stocks turn bullish with the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ even more decisively. So this is really a risk off move. When we see these more volatile small cap companies come back, we're not quite out of the woods yet. A break above here at that 200 would be even more confirming, but certainly solid firm footing there as it relates to small cap stocks. And another area I wanted to share with you among technology. Now, this is semiconductors up 9.2, but bearing in mind that it really has been a very volatile area. This week, we did get a couple more names in semis that came out with strong numbers, strong outlook, really helped boost this area. So a nice break above that 50 would really bring this area to life. And I believe there are about 110 semiconductor stocks. Of those, only a handful of large cap names are really in bullish positions, but they are looking quite constructive. I talked about that in my MEM Edge report. I will do so again in 
further detail on Sunday. So here we are, IGV. This is the uh, ETF for software stocks, which really had been down and out just when uh, you're ready to throw the towel in on the group. It does have a sharp rally of 9.1% for the week. And as we move on, I'll share with you a couple of the names that are, uh, this group is quite a bit larger, I believe about 360 stocks, but a couple of them are really looking quite constructive here. So as we move on, one last area I wanted to point out to you was Brent crude oil pricing. Very volatile. We did have this spike up to 140 per barrel when the Iran, I'm sorry, Ukrainian invasion first came to light. So we've settled back, but another 9% boost today up 100 and uh, to $107 per barrel on the close. So a number of the energy stocks on our MEM Edge report have come back. I really should have taken a moment to look at the XLE for those of you that bought into energy. We declared it as turning bullish here on January 3rd. And sure, you're going to have these pullbacks. We did have this pullback into the midweek period. We said stay with the names and they are coming uh, out and back to the upside again for oil. So those of you that are holding names in that area, stay with them. They are still looking quite good. So from here, I am going to take a very brief break and lots more I want to share with you. So stick around. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Mary Ellen McGonigal, author of the MEM Edge Report. In my bi-weekly report, I highlight top growth stocks as they enter buy zones, and I educate subscribers on why that stock is attractive both technically and fundamentally. In addition, you'll be alerted to when it's time to exit that stock based on negative technical action. And this bi-weekly report gives you confidence by providing fundamental insights into why an area of the market is strong and which companies within that strong area have the best growth profiles that will help propel that stock higher. Subscribers to the MEM Edge report are benefiting from my expertise in uncovering top performing growth stocks. Subscribe now to take advantage of my special trial offer. And we are back. The next half of this show is going to be all about using list of very relevant either ETF or stocks to help guide you and inform you as to what did take place this market uh, in the markets last week. So we're going to start here with the heavyweight FANG stocks. I have Tesla in here as well. The primary reason is because these broader markets, despite we had a very sharp year-to-date rally in energy stocks, but the energy ETF is only 2.9% of the S&P 500. The stocks listed here are your heavyweight names, and they are names that will need to come back to life to really support a continued uptrend in the broader market indices. So we have each of these names listed, that RSI indicator here in descending order. So I'm just going to share a couple of highlights with you. I talked about Amazon being up 11% on the week. We had this double bottom formation, big move forward. And this is this 200 days, your next barrier, if you will, from here. And this is going to be true really of any of these names that have had these sharp rallies. You're going to want to uh, revert or take a look at an intra- day one hour price chart, primarily to gauge whether that uptrend is still in place. And I use a five and a 13 simple moving average, as long as we are continuing to find support above that moving average, and we don't get that MACD negative crossover, the uptrend is still in place. If we do get a pullback, this one hour will provide you with intel as it relates to entering back in when the stock breaks above these moving averages in conjunction with your RSI turning positive and the MACD. You certainly generally and really always are not paid to chase stocks, but drilling down to that really shorter time frame is going to be quite helpful. 
So from here, let's go back and take a look at a couple of other names. I talked about Tesla, the stock was up 14%, but here we are at resistance. That 50 day is 903. And actually we did close just a touch above that at 905. Actually 904 is the 50 day. So just a little bit above that, but take a look at the volume, nice volume characteristics on this Friday. And a break above that would be super good news for Tesla, of course, there's the talk with gasoline prices edging higher for these EV companies. Tesla is the clear front runner there. Uh, are, they are seeing money flows in. Microsoft talked about, uh, see if I can get out of that, uh, was, is uh, the heavyweight name, certainly among the software stocks just at this 200 day simple moving average. And we did inch above that. And you're gonna see a lot of that in these names where they are just budging up against this next near-term resistance and are closing just above it, but certainly enough to be convincing as it relates to a downtrend reversal. One last name here I'm going to highlight is Facebook. Of course, uh, this is the name that was has been down the most, deteriorated over 40%. So big updrafts here, trading now at about 216, next area of resistance, 2 50. So we could see a continuation rally. Uh, I've been spending a good part of today screening, really preparing certainly for this, as well as my report that will be released over the weekend. And what was revealed was the fact that your best performing names, if you will, Facebook up 15 and a half percent, were those names that were beaten down the most. And that's going to relate certainly to those industry groups as well. So a lot in the way of bottom fishing could be short selling, no matter how you term it, it is certainly where the strength was. We really have to take a look at Apple before we uh, leave this screen. And we are here just poised to potentially break above. It's not quite as uh, constructive as some of these other FANG stocks. Let's move on to another list that I have, I want to share with you because inflation is here to stay at least over the near term. I shared with you the core inflation number dropping, but the overall inflation commodity stocks do fare well. And there's also that supply shortage in commodities as the Russian invasion of Ukraine is unfortunately still very much in play. So what I've done here is I am sharing with you a broad based list of commodity ETFs. I'm going to, I have that RSI. I'm going to sort, uh, I'm sorry, in descending order, I'm going to update this because I want to share with you, we did have that sharp initial spike in a number of these precious metals, energy, all of these commodities, and they pulled back. However, they are coming back and showing signs of life. This is Global X Uranium. ETF. And again, for those of you, uh, I certainly have, and I'm trying to think the name on my MEM Edge report that we put on, it pulled back very orderly. And a lot of these names are poised to bounce and continue higher. Again, that supply chain shortage is still very much in place. And as a hedge against inflation, oftentimes these commodity stocks will fare quite well. So oil is very well represented in here. What I wanted to do from here is share with you some of these areas that are just now beginning to turn. And that is lithium here it coming down up out of this uh, long downtrend. For those of you that are inclined to look at commodities and uh, those that are just beginning to ascend. So from here, I did want to go ahead and share with you some of these other areas. I'm wondering, uh, let's go. Okay, so this is, I'm wondering what I'm sharing. But this particular view, what we are looking at is the top performer list on the stockcharts.com on that first front inner page. I'm going to just walk us through how I arrived at this. So on this front page, you can have these various lists. I like to look at the S&P 500, the percent up. And if you get in front of this list as the market opens, you can really take advantage of what we are seeing as it relates to these sharp rallies of these. A lot of them are down and out names that are rallying. So here's a daily two-month price chart view. What I 
did and was sharing with you earlier is I want to share with you a two day view of the outbound volume. Again, the type of thing you can do right at the open. And what is occurring this week, uh, something that I noted was that you will see names hit the list multiple days. They are under accumulation. The uh, EPAM, MTCH, just to name a couple of the names that have list CDAY that, that have been on this list more than one day as these institutions assume and accumulate positions, it will take more than one day. But more to the point, here is MTCH, and it is in the throes of potentially reversing its downtrend, match.com. But what I did want to do is go ahead and share with you an intraday view. We're just in that kind of a market where that this is really shorter term time frame is going to give you a really good view of what's taking place. So here we are with this one hour view. This is on Wednesday, the gap up that took place. So I talked about this stock hitting the list a couple of days now. So when it when a stock gaps up on the open, you will want to see on this one hour chart, you can use a 15 minute as well, but you want that third bar to post higher than the high of that first bar. We did not get that on the 16th. The stock pulled back, but let's take a look at the open on the 17th. We did, in fact, get that higher print and the stock did go on to rally. Likewise, here on the open on the 18th, third bar in and the stock rallied uh, higher. So that's why I wanted to point out to you using that one hour price chart view of these stocks. So on this particular view, here we are with HPQ, one of the big performers today, kind of sloppy on the daily, but on that intraday chart, you can really time uh, your entry point. One last area I just at least wanted to point out to you is the dividend aristocrats. I put all 60 stocks into a candle glance, primarily because in this high inflationary period, you want to embrace stocks that are raising their dividends. These dividend aristocrats have been raising their dividends and doing so, so that you are beating inflation. And then this is in descending order, your better outperformers up here in the forefront. I'll go ahead and share more of this next week. Everyone, if you have not already, go ahead and use that link below. You'll want to trial my MEM Edge report this week, and I'm going to share much more detail as far as what is taking place in the markets and how you can take advantage of this current uptrend that's taking place. So have a great weekend and hit that like button if you like what you've seen. See you next week. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.